The Adventures of Pascal Romulus, Book Two. Through dark light, through vaporous clouds, to the ether, Pascal Romulus descends. Dark lighter, self-appointed demiurge, Pascal scatters seeds, microbial offshoots, organic sparks. Soul seeker, soul maker, resold wanderlust, tendrils of hair creeping from beneath the damp hood. What was seen in the depths? What was done there? Exploits, exploited for myths, expropriated by myth-makers of uncertain date. Dateless time thrown hopelessly against history, against that obdurate wall. Heated, seated, watch how this grows. Pascal and the other, anti-archetype, lost and found companion, alter ego altered and brought up from the abyss. Orphic lover, Orphic alternative, Orphic mystery seemingly solved. This is the good mirror, thinks Pascal. This is the mirrored meeting. These are the two that are one, singing of love. So it seems, comes the echo, so it always seems. When you wandered up, flowered boots among the flowers, were you dreaming of happy endings? Were you dreaming of love at all? And are you now? There were puppets and puppet masters. There were armies of trolls. There were clubs and foundations, associations and parties, in living rooms and backyards. There was history, and there were history's losses, history's erasures, histories of inevitability stretching backward and forward, eternity glowing or glowering in streets and darkened hallways. There were borders. And there was Pascal Wanderlust, writing in a room, writing in the past, writing in the present. Here is Pascal Wanderlust, in the present and of the present, witness and actor, acting as witness, Pascal the historian, Pascal the agent, claiming agency. All the elegant instruments are cast aside. In the stadium the anthems ring out, and in the dive bar, the drunks are singing. Pascal's other, anti-wanderer, seeker sent forth, attends. To whom? Someone in the crowd, at the rally, at the all-you-can-eat buffet, hungry soul talking to himself while shouting with the others, or in the bathroom with a needle in her vein. Vain anti-hero, to think a presence could make a difference. Come back, reads Pascal's text. Come back and tell me what we need to know. Come back and tell us about the pain. Wanderlust awakens, the other sleeps on. At dawn, the wise and ancient insects begin to creak and chitter, singing tragic songs. Lost lovers, lost children, harsh realities leeching into dreams. This must be what they mean by oniric infection, a condition I was never taught to prevent. No hope of a cure, shamanic or otherwise. I was never properly schooled, but it didn't seem to matter up till now. Now and in the foreseeable future, head shaking under the hood. The nightmares of the waking world are more than any sleeping soul can bear. Pascal's other turns and makes sweet moan, a gentle kiss, and quietly Pascal slips out. Pascal wanders up the little street, finds the house number, reads the sign in the window. Dr. Augustus Sprechenbaum, Psi D, member in good standing, third eye. Long and short-term treatments available. Psychic wisdom on a need-to-know basis. Draws a deep breath. Knocks. A young woman, scarcely out of her teens. A corridor leading to a stuffy waiting room. Tweed suit. Short white beard. A Siamese cat yawns, stretches, settles back on the couch. Master, 
I have come, begins Pascal, but the old man raises his hand, shakes his head. From Alexandria, I went to Giza. No one knew the school was still in operation. I don't know why they let me stay. Stargazing, mostly. Some ventriloquism. Eventually, I was named an adept. From there, I set up shop in Prague. Florence had little to offer but Paris, and Vienna, of course, and Zurich. You'd be surprised. But what about your problem? What can I tell you that you don't already know? You see a man indignant, hostile, enraged, but I see an infant crying out in need. He hurls his misery at you. Can you contain it? You grow miserable yourself. There are potions, incantations, songs of experience. You know all the tunes. My dear, look at those boots. This newest avatar suits you. Now go home. Obsessive Pascal, alone or in company, writes letters that remain unsent, speechifies to imaginary audiences. Take the old man's advice. If it is advice, Pascal, prone to panic, prone to pursuing phantoms, spooked by phantasms floating in the dark, collects traumas as if they were souvenirs. Memories flood the soul. The smoldering ashes of the great estate, the sky above full of bright wings falling. What do they screen? Betrayals, accusations. Desires, summoning desires, the endless deferral of gratification. Pascal calls out to that questing band, that ecstatic company, hears them call back the name that names the task. Dark Lighter. Pascal studies the harsh argot of crows, the jabbering jargon of jays, the oral law of owls. Fluent in the Esperanto of gulls, raised hearing the mothering coo of doves, Wanderlust wonders why the blackbird's melodies, the lark's light airs, have yet to find their way into the codex. Upper, upper limit music, lower limit speech. Wanderlust wants none of it. No range or sliding scale. An infinite interdimensionality constitutes the nested totality. Out of the marsh of a lonely mind, a red-winged blackbird sings. In a dream, Pascal searches down a maze of corridors, through randomly opening doors, a friend imprisoned, a favorite jacket missing, spectral breath, slow motion panic, Pascal wakes, fallen world, mediated world, peopled by hungry ghosts, populated by robot voices, endless boasts, endless lamentation. Pascal wakes, speaking hypnos, speaking oniric, casts spells in ancient tongues, plays the long game because there is no choice, ghostly laughter. What are you doing? What are those words you mumble? Time bombs, says Pascal. The occult explosion changes everything. It releases phantasmic energy, and all that dwells in overheated imaginations comes alive in the material world. The magicians dabbling in nuclear science, the physicists practicing the necromantic arts, the poets and painters providing templates and archetypes updated in an instant, caught in a temporal loop, an alternate reality. Ever dissatisfied, Pascal considers the well-appointed cell, looks out the window to the street below. No monstrous hybrids, no barricades, no wizards, no revolutionaries? There is a fire that burns in everything. So teaches the hermit in his cell, 
the wandering scholar beneath the trees. Depart from yourself and you will know it in every molecule of your being. It is always the telling of the telling, song sung in a hereafter that always lies ahead. I don't believe it, says Pascal, at a desk in the study or following the ley lines in the meadow. Hears thunder on the ridge, shots in the street, tightens the laces of flowered docks, pulls the hood down low. To be continued.